Monster Rancher 2, or more accurately Monster Farm 2, has just recently been ported to the Switch and to mobile devices. It's a game about raising monsters to fight, which may seem really standard on the surface, considering all the other games that came out around the same time, but it has a ton of features and mechanics that no other game in the genre really ever expanded on. Like death. That's kind of a bummer. If you've ever played Monster Rancher 2, I'm sure you've struggled with it at some point. The game is obtuse and it never holds your hand. And even after you think you're on the right track and raise a strong monster, well... Monster Rancher 2 can be extremely taxing and frustrating, and it's a difficult game. But, consider the following. It's not. Monster Rancher 2 is actually a very, very easy game. Once you know what you're doing. Monster Rancher 2, and the series in general, is known for its sim-like mechanics and its hidden systems. The design philosophy of this game is much more akin to raising a pet or coaching a boxer than it is to other, more popular monster racing games that it's commonly compared to. It's like an insanely complicated Tamagotchi, or an absurd version of Chow Garden, if you've played that. So, why is it difficult? Simply put, it is only difficult because you play video games like a small baby. As a small baby, you would have no concept of responsibility, or scheduling, or diet, or commerce, or math, or having to go buy groceries. But all of these are important ideas to the Monster Rancher 2 world. Throughout this video series, I will help you quit playing like a small baby and instead play like a... Uh, large... man. Print it. Monster Rancher 2 is a complex game, but what makes it complex is a series of very simple concepts that are easy to learn on their own, and that's probably why you're here. This video series assumes you have some sort of baseline understanding of the game, either you played it casually or maybe you played it as a kid, but we're going to talk about some of the complex systems the game has to offer, whether you just want to play casually, but, you know, beat the game this time, or maybe you're interested in joining the competitive scene. There are some discrepancies between the English release of Monster Rancher 2 and the Japanese Monster Farm 2, and I'll do my best to separate the stats for the two games when applicable. Each monster has their own lifespan, ranging from 350 to 600 total weeks in Monster Rancher 2, and 100 less across the board in the Japanese version. This chart shows the total possible lifespan of each monster main breed. Crossbred monsters mix their two breed lifespans at a 60%-40% ratio, so if we take Monal, who has a lifespan of 350, and combine it with a Golem, who has a lifespan of 450, we get an Obelisk, who has a lifespan of 390. This 60-40 rule comes up quite a bit when dealing with crossbred monsters, so it might make sense to commit this to memory instead of having to look it up every time. Like all things, there are, of course, exceptions to this, but they're almost entirely errors. A lot of the numbers in Monster Rancher 2's code were entered by hand and not through a formula, so there are typos here and there. I'm sure you've noticed that your monster grows in size over time, and their stat gains increase until a point where they just tank completely. The amount of time a monster spends in childhood, adulthood, and old age is not uniform though. Your monster will go through 10 stages of life that affect its stat growths and physical size. Infant, child, which is a slight increase on infant, adolescence, which is the very first big jump you see, and the first change in your monster's size. Adolescent 2, where the stats go up a little bit more. Prime, where your monster hits their maximum size and stat gains. Subprime is a slight drop, and then once you hit Elder, your stats begin to deteriorate pretty heavily. Elder 2 is about the same as Adolescent 1, and then Old Age and Twilight, Mirror, Infant, and Child. In addition to each having their own lifespan, each monster spends a specific amount of time at each stage of their life. These discrepancies are called life types, and are governed entirely by your monster's subbreed. There are four life types, and they follow these patterns. Type 1 is the normal life type, and it progresses uniformly with no real surprises. For all monsters, each step in the life stage denotes an increase in stat growths until you reach subprime, which is where your stats start falling off again. Type 2 monsters are called precocious, and have an extremely short childhood and a very, very long old age. Pros of this life type are that you reach your prime very early, and spend less time screwing around with garbage stat gains early on in life. These monsters are great for making money because the long old age means that you get to spend a ton of time farming tournaments for cash. Unfortunately, this life type doesn't really lend itself to drug training, which is a concept we'll talk about in just a sec. 
Type 3 monsters, called late bloomers, are the opposite of Type 2. They have an aggravatingly long childhood and deteriorate almost comically quickly in the old age. Because of how much of their life is spent in childhood games, these monsters are perfect candidates for drug training. We're not going to get too in-depth in it right now, but drugs like Trolleron and Paradoxing can give you insane stat boosts at the cost of a little bit of lifespan. The early game of Type 3 also tends to be a little bit more idiot-proof than some other types. You can make mistakes early on without it affecting you too much. They also spend a decent amount of their life in the main stat raising stages. The main con to type 3 is more psychological than purely mathematical, because your brain get happy when big number go up and brain get not so happy when big number not go up so much, this makes it the least enjoyable type of monster to raise for many people. They also can't really take advantage of having spent most of their life building up stats to farm tournaments later on, because their prime happens so late into their lifespan. <laughs> He's going over that cliff! So, we've now talked about three of the four life types, but we've saved the best for last. Type 4 is called the sustainable life type, and it is far and away the rarest in the game. Duckin only exists as a sub for one monster in the entire game, and Mew and Undine don't exist as subs for any monster. This type spends almost as much time in the main stat raising stages as Type 3, but also has the benefit of a longer old age. This results in a life type that is essentially all the best parts of the other life types smashed together. You have a short childhood, a lot of time to train in Prime, and a long old age to farm tournaments. All life types are workable, and the game isn't difficult enough to make any single type particularly bad. Some monsters become harder than others to raise casually because of this, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal most of the time. Chances are, if you've only ever played the game casually, that these lifespan numbers seem incredibly high. A mono living almost 8 years? I must be a scoundrel to try and defend that. You've played the game, you know that's not attainable, you are very smart, and I am a big liar. Well, congrats. You're correct. Mostly. Monsters lose lifespan every single time they hit what is known as the lifespan index, or LI for short, and even the best laid plans have to factor in LI hits as an unavoidable part of life on the ranch. If you raise your monster in an extremely conservative way, like only feeding it tablets and then doing two drills and two rests every month, your monster can live up to their maximum, but that's not much fun and ignores huge parts of gameplay. Monster Rancher has a million hidden mechanics that it tries to obfuscate for want of being a seemingly unknowable simulation. But the truth is nearly everything in the game is mathematically solved in one way or another, and the life index in particular has been known about since shortly after the game's release 20 years ago. Your monster has a meter for fatigue and a meter for stress that are hidden from you at all times but are paramount to understanding what you should do with your monster and when. LI is a formula that equals your monster's fatigue plus two times their stress. If this number equals or exceeds 70, well, congratulations! You're a bad parent, and your monster has lost a weak lifespan. This is considered a life index of 1. There are additional breakpoints that result in more lost weeks of lifespan as well. This caps at 270 fatigue plus 2 times stress for a whopping 8 weeks lost in a single week of gameplay. This may seem extreme and prohibitive, but that's because, well, realistically it is. It's incredibly hard to hit this 8 weeks lost LI breakpoint during normal play, and your monster will probably run away or get sick even before hitting this cap. For most stuff, you can expect to cap out around 3 weeks lost unless you're really trying to ruin your monster's lifespan. Sometimes there's a reason for that, but usually there's not. Now that we know that stress and fatigue must be avoided, well, how do we do that? This is where that bit about grocery shopping that I alluded to earlier comes in. It wasn't just a bad joke. I mean, it was, but it wasn't just that. There are a few training methods that have been developed over the years to minimize the amount of stress and fatigue your monster accumulates, but the most straightforward and realistically the only one you really ever have to worry about if you're not doing some weird gimmick build works like this. It's the beginning of the month. Time to feed your monster. What to pick? So many choice tablets. Just tablets. There's never a reason not to feed your monster tablets. Even if they don't like tablets, you should still feed them tablets. Why? Because math. It doesn't matter what your monster likes or dislikes for the most part, it just so happens that tablets, in conjunction with other items, allow you to train every single week without resting. No other food comes close to this level of stress reduction, and we know how important stress management is from earlier. Feed your monster tablets. Next, you need to feed your monster an item. On week one of the method, you feed your monster in nuts oil. Nuts oil reduces fatigue, meaning that at the beginning of each month, you get to lower your stress with tablets, and then lower your fatigue with nuts oil. After giving your monster nuts oil, you get to choose a heavy drill that best suits whatever stats you're trying to raise. The small stat loss on a heavy drill is dwarfed by its gains and should be seen as a massive net positive. Week 2 is a recovery week in a sense. You want to feed your monster mint leaves to reduce its stress, and then do light drills to give your monster a bit of a break. Can't be all hard drills all the time, unfortunately. And well, that's basically it. 
You now rinse and repeat these two weeks over and over again until you get bored and play another game instead. And, as you can see, this perfectly keeps your monster's life index in check and it never hits the first breakpoint of 70, though it does come close on occasion. Now, with all that said, you still do have to be careful if your monster doesn't like tablets. With only minus 10 stress reduction, it won't take long to hit your first ally breakpoint doing hard drill, light drill, hard drill, light drill. So, the way to fix this is to turn the second hard drill of every second month into a light drill. How do you stay on schedule? There's an app for that. The Advanced Viewer is a standalone app created by Lexi, link in description, that shows all your monster's hidden vitals. It's incredibly handy and the vast majority of modern players use it. Also, just as an aside, if your monster cheats, don't scold it. I know it seems counterintuitive, but there are easier ways to raise its nature, and this adds so much unnecessary stress, especially if they're bad natured. So just avoid it at all costs. If your monster has Hanger, Arrowhead, or Durahan as either their main or subbreed, they, for some reason, also get the benefit of minus 20% stress from Nutsoil, meaning that they can use the normal no rest method without you having to worry about how they feel about tablets at all. Hate them? Sucks to be you. There's no rhyme or reason for why these three monsters work this way. The game is full of weird code, so we don't even know if it's on purpose or not. And while we're on the subject of weird code, Errantry is where you send your monster to get new attacks, or techs. We'll touch more on Errantry later, but the most important thing here is the massive hit to lifespan due to a bug that doubles your life index when coming back from Errantry. Now, this has been fixed in the new port, so it's not important if you're playing on that version. But if you're playing on the PSX version of the game, whether physically on console or through emulator, this is imperative information. Going on Errantry is an important part of the game because it's the only way you can get new attacks, but there's some things to consider next time you let your monster cosplay Dog the Bounty Hunter. If your monster goes on errantry with no stress and no fatigue, they'll come back with an LI of 3, added to the 4 weeks spent on errantry and you have yourself a 7 week loss in life. But as mentioned earlier, the game is bugged and removes weeks equal to your LI a second time. Why? Cause fuck em, that's why. Because the game hates you, every errantry results in a lifespan of minus 10 weeks at the absolute minimum. Nothing you can do about it. Hope Petal Swirl was worth it. To get rid of this LI loss as quickly as possible, make sure you only send a monster on Errantry on the very first week of a month and then follow the normal no rest method on return, substituting the week 1 heavy drill for a rest. By week 2, you'll be back in shape. But wait, there's more! Battles are egregious in the same sense, but it seems completely intended whereas the Errantry thing is obviously a bug. If you enter a battle, you'll lose 3 times your LI, floored at 3, in addition to the week loss just for being alive, meaning that even if you enter a battle with no stress or fatigue, you will still lose 4 weeks of lifespan total. This gets kind of insane at the higher breakpoints, because if you have an ally of 7, you'll lose 25 weeks total for just one battle. This is 6 months of the game your monster will never get back. Gone instantly. Battling late in life can actually be a very cost efficient way to raise your stats. High ranking tournaments can give you stats that far exceed those you can gain by training as a senior citizen, so it's not all doom and gloom. Battling also affects your stress and fatigue, the former positively and the latter negatively. So, feeding your monster in nuts oil and then entering a tournament can be good ways to progress and also keep your ally in check. There's a lot of math that goes into the fatigue gain and stress loss for battling, but as long as you're playing the game normally, a nuts oil before and after the tournament will also usually get rid of almost all your fatigue, if not all of it, meaning that it's especially easy to fit this into the no rest method if you do the battle on a week you'd normally feed your monster in mint leaf. Even if you never watch another video in this series, you are still armed with enough knowledge to blow through the single player game mode, but chances are if you're watching, you've got bigger goals in mind. If you're interested in competitive play, this barely scratches the surface. This is like learning ABCs. It gets way more intense from this point on, and I figured an easy primer was probably the best way to start this off. In the next video, we'll be taking a look at stats and how to get the most out of your offense and defense and some other fun stuff that's necessary if you want to be a threat in the competitive scene. I really enjoyed making this video, I'm kind of new to YouTube, I've had this channel forever, but I mostly stream at twitch.tv slash moosebones, and uh, every Wednesday and Sunday I stream Monster Rancher 2 tournaments, and then on the other days, sometimes I'm playing fighting games, sometimes I'm doing casual streams, I'm showing my build process if there's a tournament coming up, that kind of thing. I'm really passionate about getting more people involved in this game, and please let me know if you liked the video, if there's things that you think I can improve on, other things that you want to know for lessons, I have a bunch of ideas right now. Uh, I'm eventually going to go over every monster in detail and talk about what they're good at and what they're not good at and what some good builds are for them and that kind of thing. But until then, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. I entered the fucking New Year's Cup.